Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are making this spiced strawberries and cream cake. It is incredibly easy. Now I am using an egg based Genoa sponge but if you uh, don't want to use eggs or if you want to make this eggless there is an eggless sponge cake recipe that I have made before and I am going to link this right here so you will be able to see that here yes here uh, and it will also be linked down in the description box so if you don't want to make this with eggs you can make the eggless version it is super simple and um, it's rich and creamy with the freshness of strawberries and you can see how the syrup has sort of soaked into the sponge um, at the bottom it's perfect and it's just the right recipe for this season so let's get straight into this recipe the very first thing you want to do is macerate your strawberries. It basically just means marinating the fruit in some sugar. So I'm going to chop my strawberries into tiny pieces, just roughly chop them. And once you've done that, this is all of my strawberries that I've chopped roughly and into this I'm going to add my castor sugar. What this does is the juices from the strawberries release, the sugar also starts to uh, get nice and syrupy. After about an hour of leaving this in the refrigerator, you'll see that the strawberries and the sugar start to release uh, the juices and it becomes nice and syrupy, which is perfect. Leave this aside. Now let's work on our uh, sponge cake mix. Firstly, preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius. Now here in, a, in the bowl of my stand mixer, I have some eggs and some castor sugar. All the quantities have been listed down in the description box below so make sure you check that out. I'll start off on a slow to medium speed for about a minute and then I'll crank the speed up all the way to high and mix this or whip this for about 10 minutes. Now while that's happening we will prepare our um, dry ingredients which is basically all purpose flour and cornstarch or corn flour. We'll just sift this in uh, a bowl now i'll transfer this back into the original bowl from where we use the all-purpose flour and i'll sift it again so we've basically sifted this twice we'll sift it a third time again but that will be directly in the bowl uh, in which the eggs are whipping so just sift this and leave it aside now let's go back to our um, egg mix and see how that is coming along that looks incredible look at the change in the color from a deep yellow it's gone pale almost white looking uh, fluffy mix of eggs so this is exactly what we're after but after 10 minutes you're not going to stop it you're going to turn the speed of the stand mixer all the way down to low and then just whip this for about two minutes Uh, it's basically called the ribbon stage where you're making this infinity sign or the shape of number eight and it holds its shape without melting into or uh, mixing into the uh, whipped eggs. So this is the perfect consistency that we're after. Now this is the third time that we're sifting our uh, all-purpose flour and corn flour mix. So just sift it from a height. It just helps aerate the flour. Now into this I'm going to add some sea salt and I'm also going to add some vanilla extract and now with a metal spoon I'm going to start folding the dry ingredients, the salt um, and the vanilla extract into this batter. Now I haven't added all of the all-purpose flour and corn flour mix, just half first and then in another batch I'll add the second half of that. So you don't want to overwhelm this whipped eggs uh, with a lot of dry ingredients, it will weigh it down. So you do it in two batches, you'll add the second batch and then you'll cut and fold um, the batter uh, sorry the flour into the batter again it should look like this all of the dry ingredients should be mixed you don't want to overwork the batter at this stage you just want to mix until you don't see any flowery bits now we're going to add some oil but you're not going to dump that oil in you're going to pour it along the side of the bowl so as to not overwhelm or deflate this beautiful egg mix that we have whipped up with so much um, love and care and after putting in so much time so once you do that you're going to be really quick at this stage you're just going to like fold it really well 
um, just until everything comes together. Here I have an 8 inch loose bottom cake tin which I have greased and lined with parchment paper. I'll pour my sponge cake mix into this cake tin and then I will also make sure that I tap this cake tin against the surface to release any air bubbles like so. And now this will go in the oven at 160 degrees Celsius for about 35 to 40 minutes. A skewer or a knife inserted in the center must emerge clean. Once the cake is ready, you'll take it out of the oven. You will let it cool in its tin for about 15 to 20 minutes. Unmold the cake and let it cool completely. While all of that's happening, we'll make our frosting or our mascarpone spiced whipping cream. Here I have some mascarpone cream cheese, which is at room temperature. I'll mix this first on a medium speed so it's nice and smooth looking like this. Into this now, I'm going to add my whipping cream. Now I have used a dairy-free whip topping because that's the one that's very easily available. Into this now, we're going to add some warming spices. So here I have some freshly grated ginger. I also have some cinnamon powder and a pinch of nutmeg powder. Again, all the quantities, they've been listed down in the description box. So check it out. I'm going to chuck that in. And now with my electric beaters, First on medium speed for a minute, I'm just going to give this a good mix. Then I'm going to take my spatula and go along the sides and the bottom of the bowl because I want to ensure that the mascarpone, the spices, the, the whipping cream, they're all combined really well and there's no spare bits on the sides or under the bowl that's not mixing. So once you do that, then you'll crank up the speed all the way to high and then whip this until you achieve stiff peaks. This takes roughly two minutes, approximately two minutes. So this is what you're after. You will transfer this into a piping bag and then put that in the refrigerator until we need it again. Now here um, is my sponge cake. I'm going to invert this and take the um, base of the cake off and also peel that parchment paper off. You have to make sure that the cake is completely cooled down before you add any frosting to this. Otherwise, the frosting is just going to melt and you don't want that. Now, what I'm going to do is once my sponge cake is completely cooled, I'm going to take a cake leveler and just level the uh, sponge cake. So I get two equal uh, slices of cake. You can also use a serrated knife to do the same. I just like a cake leveler because it's very simple. You can see how soft and fluffy this cake is. Now, this is my frosting that we made earlier. I have transferred it to a piping bag and I've just snipped the piping bag and I haven't used a piping nozzle here. I'm just going to add dollops of this spiced mascarpone whipping cream all along the sponge cake. Now you can see our macerated strawberries. Look at that syrup that we've got and the fruit has softened and it just tastes incredible. We're going to start piling up the chopped macerated strawberries on top of our cream uh, dollops. And then we're going to take that syrup and we're going to pour it generously all along the top of the cake. And you'll see that as you do that, the sponge cake actually soaks in all of that syrup, making it more moist, more flavorful and incredibly delicious. Once you've added all of the strawberry chunks and the syrup, it's time now to top it off with the other half of our sponge cake. Now you can just leave it like this and dust it with some icing sugar. I like to go a step further and you take a little bit of that frosting and just sort of spread it around the top of the cake. What this does is, is basically it acts as a glue because what we're going to do now is we're going to pile up halved strawberries on top of the cake and now as a final finishing touch we're going to dust it with some icing sugar this is such a simple and heartwarming recipe it's so perfect for this strawberry season i mean just look how simple elegant and delicious that looks It's time now to slice into this cake. And just look 
how amazing that looks on the inside all those different layers all the 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 syrup that the sponge has soaked up it just adds so much flavor it's just incredible so guys this is it this was my recipe for the spice strawberries and cream cake um it's a beautiful sponge cake and i cannot wait to give this a go so let's dive right in look how well that sponge has soaked in the syrup from the macerated strawberries this is so incredible you get a very mild heat from the ginger the freshly grated ginger that's in this mascarpone whipping cream and there are also some very subtle notes of the cinnamon and the nutmeg so the goal here is for the spices to not overpower the strawberries but to complement the flavor of the strawberries so the richness from that mascarpone whipping cream is sort of cut with the freshness of the macerated strawberries and that along with that light and fluffy sponge which has soaked in all of that syrup from the macerated strawberries just makes this the perfect 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 dessert i really hope you give this a go because it is going to be a hit in your home i guarantee you that so um if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time i post a new video i'll see you again in another recipe until then goodbye and happy baking